Good morning, Mount Zion, and welcome to worship. Um, I want to say thank you this week to Brian Jenkins and Jason Belt, as always, for their help with making sure that worship gets recorded and uploaded every week. I also want to say a special thank you to our trustees. Um, our trustees have been hard at work all throughout the time that our church has been closed. But they've been called on in some special circumstances to open the church, to set up, to tear down, particularly as it relates to our um, COVID vaccine clinics. Last Friday, um, we received a last minute request from the health department, some, uh, some other church who had signed up to be a site for the vaccines had to cancel at the last minute. And so the health department called us and as always, our trustees stepped up to the plate. I want you to know how much I appreciate what you guys do every single week. I also want to remind us that on September 4th, we will be returning to in-person worship at 10.30 a.m. on that Sunday morning. We will continue to be masked until probably 2022. We will continue to practice social distancing as we already know that our children cannot yet be vaccinated and we wanna keep them protected. And we always have persons in the congregation who are unable to receive the vaccine for a variety of reasons. And so we want to protect and care for all of our congregation. So when we return to in-person worship, we will be returning with masks and we will be returning in a socially distanced way. Let's prepare for worship. The Lord is in this place with us through digital space, people of God. Like King David, let's worship the Lord with all our might. Let's dance for joy. Let's raise our praise unashamedly. But most importantly, let's commit to living like we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in all heavenly places through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to lift up in prayer by name all those persons who you feel led to pray for. We lift up, as always, our sick and shut in. We lift up those who are experiencing grief. We lift up those who are experiencing health challenges and pain in their bodies or in their minds. We ask God to be a big God in each one of those circumstances. And we pray for each of you. Pray that God is continuing to bless you and pray that God gives you the desires of your heart. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Lord of the dance of life, you have breathed into us your creative, joyful spirit. You've blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You've lifted us from the dust into the swirling joy of your presence. We're so grateful for all that you've done for us. Each day reminds us in many ways of your mercy and of your love. Yet, there are times in our lives where we feel hurt and frightened, lost and alone. Times when we ask the question, God, where are you? God, we ask that you be with us in the midst of those questions. Remind us again of your loving presence. Place your hands of healing on our lives for our sick and shut in. Comfort those who are grieving and minister to us when we become afraid, lost, lonely, and fearful. God, let your healing power flow through us and around us and in us that we might be the whole people of God. Prepare us to faithfully serve you all of our days. 
as we've lifted up those who we are concerned about today, we ask that you meet their needs according to your will. We ask that you provide healing and hope, that you remind us that we are your hands and your feet. Lord, we ask that you reach out by your spirit and touch all of those who need a special touch from you today. Be with us now in this time and place across the miles and across the airway and in all the places and times of our lives. For it is in the name of Jesus and by the power of his resurrection that we pray. Amen. Join me, if you would, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture for this morning, Ephesians chapter one, verses three through 14. And for the next couple of months, we will be diving deep into the book of Ephesians. And I invite you to, as a part of your daily devotions, from now through the end of August, just read the book of Ephesians. Read a chapter or a few verses a day and allow the Spirit of God to minister to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Just as God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before God in love, God destined us for adoption as God's children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of God's will to the praise of God's glorious grace that God freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the richness of God's grace that God lavished on us with all wisdom and insight. God has made known to us the mystery of God's will according to God's good pleasure that God set forth in Jesus Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to God's counsel and will. So that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of God's glory. In Christ, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and that had believed in him, you were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, this, is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of God's glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to, to join me in a short prayer as we consider the topic today, spiritual blessings in Christ. God, we often don't know the extent to which you blessed us by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't often recognize how you bless us every single morning. So as we encounter your word today, remind us of the deep, rich, lavish, extravagant blessings that you have lavished on us because you love us 
In Jesus' name, amen. The art of celebration and giving thanks for God's creation has been lost in our 21st century world. Certainly after the year that we've come through, though we should be extra grateful, for some of us, it is just a time of extended complaining. The human family is caught up in this us versus them dichotomy, but in this letter, the author calls all believers of all nations, tribes, ethnicities, and genders into a prayer of thanksgiving and praise to God, our creator. It's believed that this letter was not written to a specific church, but as a letter to be circulated to all the churches in Asia Minor, which Paul established during his three-year ministry in the area of Ephesus. You can read about Paul's mission trip to Ephesus in Acts chapter 19. The author of this book is unknown. And while the book says it's written by Paul, and while many people attribute it to Paul, the wording and language make scholars believe that someone else wrote the letter and used Paul's name in order to have some credibility and some acceptance. That does not make the letter any less important to the life of the church because obviously this letter was sent as a way of encouragement and instruction to churches who maybe needed a little pick-me-up after a hard time. And certainly, I think we need that after a year of COVID. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14 is a celebration of God who from the beginning of times wrote the script and melody of human life, as well as the natural order of things. Creation's music and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ reveal something important about who God is. The mystery of God summons people, you and me, to live together as sisters and brothers because of what Christ has done and because Christ's death, burial, and resurrection formed humanity into a new creation. The writer of Ephesians invites us to sing a spiritual hymn, one that centers all souls on the orderliness of the creator. Three words captivate the mind and soul and heart, chosen, redeemed, and sealed. Humanity, our being, is not an accident, but we have all been enshrined and covered in the blanket of divine love. The opening outburst of verses three to five is a joyful celebration of what God in and through Jesus Christ did in bringing believers into an already but not yet world of salvation. Our lives are embedded in the life of the resurrected one, not just for now, but for all of eternity. The chapter doesn't claim that Christians are any, in any way out of this world, but as resurrected and Pentecost people, our daily lives are to be lived in such a way that it's clear that we belong to God's kingdom. In other words, Christians are called to embody the Holy Spirit, to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, to love like God loved, and to live as though we are covered by divine love. In the verses that we read, we find the basics of our faith expressed, except that it it seems like it's much more than just the basics. It's rather grand to think of all that we've gained in Christ Jesus. On a timeline, the description stretches from before time to the fullness of time. 
on a graph, it encompasses everything, things in heaven and things on earth. On a scale, the lavishness of God's plan would break the springs. The writer gives us a sense of the size and scope of these ingredients of our faith with a fascinating literary device. In the original Greek, verses 3 through 14 are one continuous sentence. It's rather expansive, and yet the blessing that God has for us is that expansive and that lavish. Oh, we often speak casually about blessings. I'm blessed and highly favored, and we look at blessings simply as things that God does for us. But Ephesians would have us to understand that we don't know the half of it. We're blessed in ways that are literally out of this world. The text says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Our blessings then are not lim limited to the temporal, but they reach all the way into eternity. God's blessing toward us is, is expressed in three ways. First, God chooses us. Just as God chose us in Christ, God destined us for adoption. That's verses four and five. We are blessed because we've been chosen, chosen, adopted, and incorporated into both God's earthly and heavenly families. This understanding of being chosen does not make us feel that we're better than others, but reminds us of who we are in Christ and should motivate us to live like our daddy. The second thing is that God redeems us. Verse seven says, in Christ, we have redemption and forgiveness. We are then by the riches of God's grace fashioned into new creatures. Whatever we did in the past, However we failed in the past, whatever, wherever we fell short in the past is all behind us. Whatever we were before, we have been redeemed and bought with a price. We are covered by God's redemptive grace. And finally, God unites us. Indeed, God brings unity to all things in God's creation. Verses 9 and 10 say, God has made known to us the mystery of God's will to gather up all things in God, things in heaven and things on earth. From this elaborate, extravagant blessing streams a single consequence, the blessing of God. We are destined as recipients of all the spiritual riches elaborated in this long sentence before us to live for God's praise and God's glory. In a beautiful literary symmetry, this long flowing hymn concludes the same way it opened with the benediction of God. God is glorified in our blessedness. In God's glorification is our human story. It's a long story of a God who loved us so much that God sent God's only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believers are cautioned to remember that our presence on earth is about God's will and not our will. And so our failure to join the writer of Ephesians in praise and thanksgiving to this God might result and are missing out on the spiritual blessings that the writer describes. In lifting these blessings or riches that believers in Christ now enjoy, the author of Ephesians redefines the nature and quality of the church as a place where God intends to manifest salvation and where God's presence dwells. In a the church is the place where God intends to manifest salvation and where God's presence dwells. 
in a way. Ephesians reminds us that God's creation is not a one-time event, but rather it is an everyday process. We are being made new every single day. And so for the church at Ephesus and the churches in Asia Minor and the churches in 2021, Earth, we need to be reminded again as we look at our return to our buildings that church is not a building, but rather church is God's domain where a new humanity is being created. This new creation called the church is open to all nations, all races, all ethnic groups, rich and poor, people of all genders and persuasions in a world so polarized and so divided, Ephesians reminds us that the church is to be the heart of humanity, the church where the saints of God step in unity. Everyone is welcome in the church because it's the place where God molds, forms, and shapes us into the image of Christ. The message of Ephesians chapter one, verses three through 14, is that God has already declared that the world is predestined for God's love. And this love is not just for the people we like, and the people who look like us and think like us, but this love is shed toward all humanity in a subtle but poignant manner Creation and resurrection are all a part of God's plan. While God created the world, nature and humanity, Jesus Christ on the cross brought forth the plan of God, making it possible for us to enjoy the blessings and riches of God's kingdom. So the question I ask, and I would hope that it stays with us the whole week, knowing that we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places through the riches of God's glory in Christ Jesus. How should we live as geared up, sold out Christians? Amen. God, remind us of your lavish blessings on us in Jesus Christ that we might live as people redeemed, set free, chosen, and sanctified. Amen. If you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus, I invite you to live into the blessings that God has already bestowed on humanity in Jesus Christ. It's just a matter of accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. If you're here and, and listening and you're without a church home, I invite you to unite yourself with a body of believers. Unite yourself with a body of believers that, that we all might be encouraged and uplifted together. Mount Zion is a church committed to showing God's love and being open and inclusive to all of God's children. There's a place and a work here for you, if you so desire. If you need prayer, please leave us a note in the comments and we'll pray for you. If you have a need, leave us a note in the comments and we'll reach out to you. If you've made a decision for Christ today, or if you'd like to unite with Mount Zion United Methodist Church, um, I invite you to leave a note in the comments section and we will reach out to you. We want to celebrate you. Let's prepare for the benediction. Children of God, celebrate the life you've been given. Rejoice in the spiritual blessings that God has bestowed on you. Live your life with all your might as a dance to God's glory. Live to the praise and glory of your God. Amen.